Hello and welcome to another episode of Robotics 101. Today we're going to talk a little bit about control systems and control loops. Uh, last episode we talked about controlling motors. Uh, this week we're going to focus only on DC motors. We're going to first start with uh, the simple servo. Uh, you can find hobby servos on our website, on other websites. Servos are controlled using PWM. That's pulse width modulation. As you can see on the board, the pulse width is actually the information telling me where I want to drive the servo. The pulse is typically between 1 to 2 milliseconds, with 1.5 milliseconds being the center of the servo. Uh, we call that zero degrees. If you take a uh, half a millisecond back or forward, that's usually negative 90 plus 90. Now, uh, there's a 20 millisecond break between each pulse, so most servos have an update rate of about 50 hertz. To kind of demystify what's inside of a servo, we have a small board here that is uh, pulled from one of these high-tech servos, and you can see we attached another motor for another application, but uh, essentially you have a very small microcontroller and a little potentiometer. This potentiometer is what's giving you the feedback of the position. So as I'm driving the signal through the wire, I'm telling it where I want it to go, and then the potentiometer is telling the servo where it is. And through some small circuitry, it'll kind of uh, figure out where it needs to move. To take that a step further and really show you what's going on, I've created a Arduino-based servo. I have pulled the, uh, the guts out of this servo, and just taken the motor leads uh, into a motor controller, and I've pulled the potentiometer leads from here back into the microcontroller. So I'm doing the exact same thing that the high-tech servo would be doing, but on a micro. So as I turn the potentiometer uh, for the direction where I want it to go, it, it slowly moves the servo back and forth. Another cool thing to do with uh, the remains of a servo is I've actually removed the potentiometer and what I've done is I've replaced it with two 2.K ohm resistors. And what it's doing is it's mimicking a potentiometer glued to that zero position. So what's kind of neat is if I were to plug this into a radio receiver, I now have a small speed controller for a motor. Um, this could typically run up to about 500 milliamps, and it's a really cool way to recycle old broken servos that have stripped out gears or uh, broken, broken servo horns. Now that we've talked a little bit about servos, let's kind of look at more of a lo-fi approach of something interesting to do with a, uh, a motor assembly. So what I've done here is I've taken two switches and I've wired them into an H-bridge configuration, if you remember from our last video. And what I've done is I'm using this plate on top to actuate the switches and to drive the motors. This is a kind of a neat little idea for something like a power steering unit. This is, this is almost how it would work in your, your automobile. What I have is this is, the, the, this is called the common pin on a micro switch. So I've taken the common pin to each lead of the motor. And then this is either a normally open or normally closed position. It really doesn't matter which one you decide to use. The only thing that will, that will affect it is if you're normally closed, these two switches will be closed together and you'll be tied to ground, or these two switches will be closed and you'll be tied to, to VCC. What happens is when you have a normally closed uh, switch, it stands in, let's say, this position and this position. Now, when I turn the little wheel, what's going to happen is I'm going to click one of those switches and I'm going to break this circuit and I'm going to make this circuit. Now, if you look closely, you'll see that I have a current path flowing through the motor this way, which makes the motor turn you know, counterclockwise or clockwise, whichever way you have it wired up. Um, now, if we do the exact opposite, we leave the switches alone. We'll uh, go back to normally, normally closed for both of them. The motor doesn't move. And in fact, because the motor leads are shorted together, it's actually providing a nice braking action so the motor doesn't want to turn. Let's turn it the other way. So we'll break this switch, make it here. And now, as you see, the current now flows through the motor the opposite way making the motor turn the opposite. It's kind of a nifty little trick to, uh, to make a simple control system without any microcontrollers. What we have here is a motor assembly with a small encoder. So what's happening is we're driving the motor and reading the speed via encoder. 
So the encoder gives us a nice little pulse train, and I'm using the microcontroller to read how many pulses per second I, I want to go. What I have is a simple potentiometer, and as I turn the potentiometer up, I'm requesting that the motor spin faster. And essentially what's happening is the code sees that the potentiometer wants me to move at, let's say, 50 pulses per second. And what it'll do is it'll continue to increase the motor speed until the encoder is reading 50 pulses per second. Now, likewise, if I turn the speed down, I slow down the motor. And then, of course, if I turn the potentiometer all the way to zero, it'll stop the motor. Right now we've been detecting speed, but what if we wanted to detect direction? So this is where we uh, use a term called quadrature encoding. If we were just using a single input encoder, we would have a nice little square wave that would tell us, you know, the, the distance between each one would tell us how fast the motor's moving. What we're going to do is we're going to add a second detector, but we're going to put it just 90 degrees out of phase. So a typical encoder wheel is either a series of, of slots or it's uh, light and dark plotches, you know, 90 degrees out of phase. What you'll notice is our square wave is you have uh, A is usually leading B if you're going forwards, and that's because you would detect a black edge first on the, on the top side, whereas if you were to reverse the motor, B would lead A. So what it actually gives you is a speed and direction. Now, using this idea, you can make something really interesting, which would be an encoder-based servo. Now, this is what you would use for high-speed applications. Uh, high-end CNC machines uh, use these for uh, rapid placement, uh, pick-and-place machines. This is kind of where the future's at. But the problem is, is our little 8-bit micros sometimes aren't fast enough to uh, monitor all these little pulses between multiple motors. So what I've done is I've enlisted the help of a commercially bought uh, industrial motor controller. This is actually from an XY stage from a, an old CNC machine. But you can use this for, for a multitude of things from, you know, uh, steering servos, airplane ailerons use these, lo lots of cool applications. So now that we've talked about encoders using uh, quadrature for directionality, uh, one thing I haven't talked about is how do you make these servos smooth? Sometimes with you know, analog potentiometer-based servos, you'll find they'll do this servo hunting. Uh, sometimes you'll find in encoder systems, you'll find these weird oscillations uh, of it trying to find its home. This is a whole field of study called controls. And uh, what we're gonna focus on for this episode is just uh, PID control or PID. PID control is uh, representative of proportional integration and derivative control. So what we're doing is we're measuring the error of where our system is and where we want it to be, and we're applying these three kind of correction factors. Proportional is what we would kind of consider a first order correction, and a proportional is essentially what you would think. It's the difference between where I want to be and where I am. And we've applied some sort of constant to bring it back into the, the correct, correct place. The integral is kind of taking the sum of the errors. So if we've been wrong for two or three measurement cycles, it adds those up and it tries to get us to the next point even faster. So this is useful if your proportional control uh, segment isn't quite dampening fast enough. But the downside to an integral term is you can get something called integral windup, where if, if you hold on to a motor and it's trying to hunt for its spot and you let go, it's going to rocket ship until it tries to get uh, to its position, which in some cases is quite dangerous. Finally, there is this little segment called the derivative, and it's kind of the where, how fast are we headed towards our target, our target goal? For most of the applications that I use, I'm looking mostly at the P and I terms of a control loop, and uh, D is only used for final smoothing. That's all we have for today on Robotics 101. Next week, we're going to take another look at some more specialized tools. Until then, see you again. <laughs>